Welcome to another episode of Risk Guys. This is another 6 player progressive card game on classic Risk map which is being played with my subscribers. The pink and orange players are beginners, the blue player is an expert, the white player is a master, and the green player is a grandmaster. Settings, Alliances off, Balance Blitz Dice Rolls and 60 seconds per turn. In progressive card games it could be very good to be spread out well enough, to have your troops in multiple different places of the map, so it would be harder for your opponents to take you out. So it would have been great for me to add some troops to either South America or Australia. But with the orange player being a low rank player I decided not to risk it so I didn't add any troops to South America. I mean due to him not having that much experience judging by his stats, I have no idea whether he knows how to properly play with progressive cards or not. And whether he would be crazy about going for the continents or not. So at the end I decided to play safe and don't add my 3 troops into South America. However if the orange player was a high ranked player, then I would have added them there. I felt much better about possibly adding my troops to Australia since it didn't clearly belong to any of the players. But by firstly wanting to see if anyone would be desperate to go for it, I decided not to add my troops there either. And it seems the pink player might want to go for Australia, so I'm not going to add my troops there so they wouldn't be wiped out later on in the game. The pink player is a low rank player as well, so I'm not sure whether he knows much about the progressive cards either and because of that I don't want to risk it. So anyways as you can see the orange player is the only player who got lucky to capture a continent. Continents in 6 player progressive card games playing on the classic risk map are not that much important, but they could still be a great bonus. Especially if you get them early on in the game. It gives the orange player high chances to not be eliminated one of the first players from the game because he will be the strongest so it will make the most sense for the opponents to go after other players firstly, or at first they might not even have enough troops to eliminate the orange player from the game at all. But of course that's possible that the orange player might waste some troops on other opponents for no good reason, so even though he is the only one who has a continent, he might still not end up being as the strongest player when we will start trading in sets. So it really depends on the orange player's moves. There could be a problem if a lot of players get a continent in the beginning of the game though, like if one player captures Australia, another one South America, and the third one Africa. Then it could be tough for the no continent players because they will be the weakest, meaning that they will be easiest ones to eliminate. And with the small continents being occupied, it doesn't leave them much space to spread out. So because of all of that it really gives a high chance for them to be eliminated first, assuming these small continent players understand that their goal should be to look forward taking out opponents when it's worth for their cards, and if they're smart enough to not end up having their biggest armies blocked. Like in public lobbies low rank players could really usually end up blocking their army having Australia, by leaving their army on Siam while having the territories of India and China blocked so they end up not really having a chance to take someone out when it's worth to do so for that opponent's cards. So anyways, it seems my opponents are skipping their fifth card so they wouldn't be the players to trade in a set first, ending up with the lowest amount of troops, because as you know the sets in progressive card games start with 4 troops and with every traded in a set the value of a set increases. So while the first player ends up of only getting 4 troops, the 6th player receives even 15 of them. On the other hand if you're one of the last players to trade in sets, then you could end up being in a bigger danger, especially if you don't have a set at the crucial moment. And if you're the 6th person to trade in a set, then you could quite likely get eliminated in either 2nd or 3rd round of trading sets by either 4th or 5th player. But again, if you're the first player to trade in sets, then, you will be the weakest, so it could be easy to eliminate you while for you it could be hard to eliminate someone, so you could very easily end up being in one of the worst positions. So personally I'm not that sure how of a good or of a bad idea is to skip the fifth card in the first round of sets. I think it could really depend on individual situation. One time it might be good while the other one not so much. And also you don't really know if other players are going to skip the 5th card as well or not. 
and then you don't know how lucky your opponents will be to get the sets at the right moment, and whether a lot of them will trade in the sets early after the first round of sets or not. So personally for me the question of skipping the fifth card looks kinda complicated, so I guess I need to get quite much more experience playing with progressive cards. But yeah, looking to the troops counter my disadvantage is already very visible the troop wise. On the other hand I will probably be the first player to trade in a set first as well, so because of that I should be safe. But if some players trade in sets earlier than me, then it should be even better because I would end up of getting more troops while probably nobody would go after me anyways because of not having the ability to trade in a set in the same turn after taking me out. So if I have a set at 4 cards, then the situation looks alright for me, but just alright. I kinda regret of not adding any troops in Australia back then because after all the pink player didn't go for Australia. If I had added some troops in Australia, then I would have been quite better the spreading out wise and also would be more suitable of taking other players out as well. As you can see the 9 troops army of the orange player on Indonesia works like a shield for the pink and green players, so if I wanted to go for them, then firstly I would need to crush the orange player's troops. And also the 9 troops of the pink player on the territory of Iceland are being shielded from me as well. However the players I could possibly go for are white and blue. But I mean they have like 50 troops each while the value of sets is at 25 troops. So it doesn't look like a great deal for me, especially with me not having that many troops and when it's quite possible for me to get bad blitz rolls ending up of failing to take the selected player out, so I won't go for them. But what are your thoughts? Maybe it was a mistake for me to not go for either of them. Assuming I would have been guaranteed taking one of them out, should I have gone for it or not? I mean the troop wise it didn't seem as a good deal for me, but on the other hand it would have put me one card ahead. I would have ended up having three cards instead of two and would have been able to trade in a set sooner assuming nobody would have taken me out. And since my opponents were on the four cards each I guess nobody would have taken me out for that one turn because nobody of them would have been able to trade in a set in the same turn after taking me out, but what about the upcoming turn? This is where my biggest worry would be. Anyways, it seems the orange player has made an oopsie, I think he wanted to take the white player out and expected to get a very favorable blitz roll going through blue's North African troops, which I considered it to be not a really good decision when he could have added those troops in Indonesia without having the need to go through blue's troops instead of adding them to Brazil. And I think this lead us to the green player winning the whole game. He took the blue player out and now he has a very great opportunity to take out the white player out as well. Or it seems he will go for purple. Or wait no. That's it, the blue player was the only one. And it's hard to believe it. I think he really missed the opportunity to win. Or do I miss something guys? I mean if I were the green player, then I would have taken the white player out and then the pink player as well too. And then with the orange and red players having two cards each, I think there would be no struggle to deal with them in the end game as well. But maybe the green player knows something we are not really aware of. We are going to find it out. Anyways, it's too bad that my troops weren't suitable to take the pink player out. Otherwise I would have definitely taken him out if my troops were in a proper position to do so. I don't really like my position right now. I'm currently one of the easiest targets for the players to access, and at the same time the second weakest player after orange. But the orange player is being blocked by the white player. The South American blocking strategy guys. The white player protects him so nobody would be able to take him easily out. It seems the green player is angry for some reasons but at the same time he is laughing too. And alright, I think I've got this. He doesn't have a set at 4 cards very unfortunately for him but very fortunately for me because I get to survive. I assume if the green player had gotten a set, then he would have taken me out. But alright, I do have a set at 4 card for myself. So let's see if I could take someone out. The orange and purple players seem to be blocked from me, so I'm not going for them. Then it could be very great to go for the white player if his Asian troops wouldn't be blocked from me 
or if my North American army would have access to his South American troops. So it seems the green player is my the only possible choice. However, do I have enough troops to safely take him out? What about if I get a bad blitz roll? And at the end is it worth to take him out? Well, half of time has already ran out. I've been thinking too long. I wouldn't like to ruin the whole game because of running out of time. As you can see I'm not the best at progressive cards either. I assume if I had taken the green player out, then I might have been able to take out all of the rest players out as well. Starting with white, then orange and finally pink. I might have won in a single turn. But who knows, what do you think about that? When my turn has started the white player said good game, so I assume he thought that I would have won the game if I had taken the green player out. And it's probably true. Anyways, the orange player has successfully taken the white player out and then he tried taking out the green player out as well, but didn't have enough troops left to take the last green's North American territory down so he stopped, which was a great decision of course. Differently than me the orange player doesn't hesitate to take not 100% chance blitz rolls, and then he is also very fast of making decisions, if he sees an opportunity to take someone out, then he will immediately go for it setting his troops up fast. And when it comes to the second part, I wish I would be more like orange. I really need to learn to plan ahead and act fast, otherwise I might keep missing the opportunities to win. So this is something I could learn from orange. Anyways, it seemed like the green player was going to take the pink player out, but then I assume he realized that he either miscalculated or is running out of time, or maybe both, so he stopped. However, when it comes to the pink player, I'm not really sure why he crushed those orange's troops in South America as with another orange player's troops being blocked in Australia, I doubt he would have been able to take him out somehow. So I guess he saw that other players taking down armies of another players, and decided to join in as well, without probably understanding that these attacks were not completely taking someone out, were just our fails. But I mean the pink player is only a beginner, so he will definitely improve and learn how to properly play with progressive cards as well. We play in subscriber games to get a good practice and it's okay if we make mistakes, by realizing them, it will help us highly improve. So with the pink player making the orange player is a very easy target to be taken out for his cards, I was thinking of the ways on how I could prevent the green player from taking pink out. But as you saw I was very struggling to come up with something on spot. And at the end a thought came to my mind which said what about if I split my biggest army to the territories of Kamchatka and Iceland. But I saw that I was running out of time. So then in the last second even a better thought came, why I couldn't just simply split my army in the territories of Kamchatka and Mongolia protecting the Orange's troops in Japan. It would have been the same strategy as the white player did with South America back then. But I didn't have any time left. But anyways. Even though I failed to protect the orange player. I think the opportunity to possibly win hasn't gone yet. As I'm so lucky enough to have a set at 3 cards. So let's use the orange player's strategy. By seeing the opportunity quickly setting the troops up, and without overthinking going fast to take the selected player out. I'm not sure yet if it's a great decision to take the green player out, but we are going to find it out as I believe it's really my last opportunity, otherwise the green player would win the game. But yeah guys. Assuming I don't get any bad blitz roll or run out of time, I think I win this game. Hopefully the pink player wouldn't have a set at 3 cards. That's a GG guys.